we've recently moved to this new lovely building that we're in now, St Michael's, uh, on the Bognor Regis campus. And uh, uh, we've been here a couple of months now, and it's been, uh, you know, it's quite a big thing during COVID, you can imagine. Uh, but now we're here, we're really feeling very positive about the future. We've got this fantastic degree show up at the moment, which you'll see a few examples of uh, later on. There's a nice aura about the campus. It's so green and quiet and you're right near the beach. It's so different from Chichester, but even, even these facilities are great. You've got the tech park, which is amazing, and you still have the availability to have your own studio space and work with other, other students. Everybody's like collectively come together to pull together a really great show. It's um, a group effort and I'm pleased that everybody's managed to get here and we're all Sort of celebrating together in the end to display what we've all made. So. As an um, artist you tend to respond to sort of your surroundings which is why it's great when you're here and you're surrounded by fellow artists but actually that was taken away from us by having to work home from home. I think it makes you a bit more, gives you a bit more resilience, makes you a bit stronger that you can work independently you still have this we still have the support of lecturers but actually when you take away all those facilities and you take away all that equipment and it's just you in your home what are you going to do and I, th I think everyone's done amazing like, um, amazing with this work I always trying to like merge drag because I love drag and uh, art so I wanted to try and figure out a way to make it more kind of like palatable for people so they kind of didn't even know that they were looking at drag initially. I was originally just going to be painting on furniture and it was just going to be the pieces in um, the display on their own and then the more I thought about what they were and that I'm painting on furniture which is quite like a domestic thing I wanted to create an installation that's kind of like a it's a room really. It was more towards the abstract. I was working with form lines and colour in order to build a composition. Like it wasn't something that had like a strong theory behind it. It's something that was more instinctual and uh, a lot more expressionistic. I was trying to achieve basically a journey on from everything else I've made with sort of geometric woodwork, like pushing my woodwork skills, learning carpentry joints, putting it all together with bold colour and this was most successful for me because it was like the biggest I'd made yet. I've had a very complicated relationship with language and I had delved a bit with it in my second year and I pulled away from it but in my third year I started to see how COVID kind of impacted with people and how uh, people were reading between the fine lines of oh what does this rule mean as lockdown and everyone had their own interpretations of it and I wanted to try and express difficulty with language and interpretation physically. I decided to make about a three, uh, 30 character alphabet which by hand with linos and I printed them individually and turned them into a digital typeface. I could not imagine what I'm doing now really because I was doing very still portraits in A-level where I came from. I did well, two years of A-level just doing portraits. I didn't know where I wanted to go with it. It was kind of like at, there was a bit of a still point where I, was, I knew I wanted to do portraits and colour um, but it was just finding the motivation to do it and um, especially in first and second year where I think I got in my head too much like I didn't actually put it down on paper. I was all in my head going, what do I do, what do I do, what do I do? And then photography has been a big thing. Just going out, getting photographs, getting the material, and then seeing these images and just wanting to paint them. And I never would have imagined doing the things like this. I think they've really just, they've just come out of nowhere, really. I just wanted to show people about like the breeding and like the relationship in between people and animals because I think we don't really think about it. We have like cats, we have dogs, but we don't think about like the domestication, about how it started and how it like happened. And like the dogs that I have painted, that's like the first um, oldest dog breed and then how 
by inbreeding other dogs, you get something that is more common now. I wanted to achieve um, something that was simultaneously deeply personal to me and brought together all of my passions and um, interests generally, tying together like history and art, that was like the main thing for me. Um, I feel like this is my most successful because it, it just does that, it encapsulates what history and parts of like historical culture mean to me in a sense and, and it allows me to to project that out. I remembered a sculpture from when I was a child called the Giant's Chair. It was in Queen Elizabeth Country Park in Hampshire and it, it didn't feature on any maps or signposts, it was completely hidden. And so I realised that actually that sort of was what I was trying to replicate, that walking through the forest, stumbling across something that doesn't belong here. So I got to work with the park and I got to go through all their archives and just began like a, a year's worth of trying to find the person that made this, this chair. Um, and then eventually I did, I found him and he, his name's Robert Jakes and he's still an artist, still a sculptor. I kind of had like the attitude that I wanted to do everything, um, which is a good mindset to have, but then you're not specialised in anything and you're never going to be 100% good. So I needed to narrow down what I, what I wanted to do. Um, and just randomly one day decided to start painting like this and it's just kind of stuck. Chichester is a really good uni for like building a kind of a camaraderie with like classmates and teachers and tutors. You need to look within yourself to understand like what you want from your own art. Uh, really listen to yourself and follow your gut. That is really what's led me here is um, just sort of combining these uh, passions and this drive for um, learning history and just creating that sort of thing um, to sort of bring me what's uh, brought today. <laughs>